Uh, it looks like Jeffrey is not um, available to attend this. So does anyone else have topics they'd like to discuss? I posted the, the meeting notes. So I think that Frederick was wanting to talk at some point about release nodes, um, which I think is something probably we should we should walk through at some point. Um, I know that there was also an action item from yesterday's meeting about looking at how to take some of the stuff in the um, the technology tree and turn it into a proper roadmap. Um, so there was. Let me stick this in the chat. There was this stuff. Um, better yet, I'll put it on the agenda. That would be even smarter. Um, yeah, that, that'll be good. I've, uh, I've told Dan recently that uh, we had been working on getting a roadmap up that, uh, that he'd be able to use. So this, this will play into that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's essentially it's it's a, it's a visual representation of the dependencies between various pieces of work, and um, in most cases with links to the um, the spec around it, and some attempt to sort of thematically group things that sort of have to be done together. Um, but there are some things we have specs for that have not made it into this picture. And there are some things in this picture for which we still could use some specs. Yeah, I, I like to think of it as a, as a skill tree. You're very, very faint, Frederick. Uh, yeah, I think my headphone is uh, not picking up with the microphone, so I have to probably talk into the phone directly. Yeah, so I like to think of it as a, as a skill tree. You know, where we spend our time is what we get back in, re in return. Yeah, no, it's it's drawn this way precisely because of, of the way that Dan talked about the technology tree and civilization in his keynote. Ah, okay, so there is a direct correlation. <laughs> oh, right. no, absolutely. I'm, <laughs> I'm remarkably devoid of original ideas. Um, yep. So, but I mean that there, even then, like this tree is is something where you'd have to explain what some of the different pieces are, right? So you'd want to have a documentation where you walk through sections and you highlight the thing and you talk about where it's going to be feature wise and then that kind of stuff. So my my proposal yesterday was to actually keep this. Uh... I inspect if I am unmuted. Yeah, I am. You are unmuted. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, you might use other opinions here. Should we keep it just as a link to this presentation? Or I don't know. I think that's a good place to start, but I don't think it's a good place to stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're 10 minutes in. Uh, do we want to dig into any of these items? Do we want to go and write a little bit and come back next week? Um, how do we want to proceed? Uh, I think that we should first uh, check uh, if Fred wants to go over the release notes, if that's, uh, that, that would be uh, slightly more urgent, I assume. Yeah, so do you want to walk through this, Frederick? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having some trouble with internet over here. This conference internet is absolutely horrible. Like, this is commonly um, true. Yeah, like I, I'm just I'm just waiting for Google Docs to load, and it's not loading for me. So, um, uh, 
Oh. It's more complicated than I thought. Um, yeah, I mean, we can simplify things as well if it's if it's too complicated. No, I I actually forgot that 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 we still have to I don't know to put the messaging that uh, I kind of skipped this meeting, but uh, there, there there was some discussions that you were trying to figure out the messaging about NSM in general that should go into the site and probably into the release notes to some extent because we here have again this RFSR architecture has been built for Kubernetes, these components include blah, blah, blah. And then uh, yeah, there's discussions if this is the right wording, if this is what it's on to say, et cetera, et cetera. So, Yeah, I mean, some of it is just like road, road work. It's just somebody has to spend time like on the on the to do for getting started, um, and we need to just start putting uh, uh, images down as they become available. Like once we've signed them, and uh, in terms of. I like this. Uh, and you, we have a to do for inserting the logo. Logo's there, so we can get rid of that. Yeah, I mean, it, yep. I, I think uh, I think what I would like to know, though, is like, is there from a high level? Uh, did we? Is there anything that we want to call out that we haven't called out? And I think that's probably the most important thing. So let me actually let me show you guys an example of something I would love to see us do with our front page. Go take a look at openpolicy.org and scroll down to use cases. Openpolicyagent.org. Yep. Now scroll down. This is where they got the index of use cases, but keep scrolling. The places that the links will take you on the front page. <laughs> okay. Well. Now also note that there is literally, if you scroll a little bit to the right, or you, you know, because we can't see the, the the full width of it, but it shows you this diagram for the use case. And then if you scroll a little bit to the right, oh, I'm sorry. You're maybe it's okay. Yeah, it's it's marshaled below for you. For me, it's left to right. But basically it shows you the diagram and then like a little terminal window that shows you what goes into it. And it does this for all the use cases. Um, and it strikes me that if we did something like this and also had, you know, it set up in such a way that you could actually run those use cases, because you'll notice that you can actually select the text in the uh, little images that they have of the, you know, so basically if we had something that ran through okay, this is how you go and run the VPN gateway example, right? Then literally when people land on our front page, they can see some of the examples of what we're about mm -hmm. and they can try them. I'm really, I really love the way they've done use cases on this page. I don't know what other people's opinions are. Yeah, these look yeah, good. Do we, are we saying that for the part where I'm, it looks like there's a, a piece of code, we're saying that we're having the YAML, like our YAML declarative uh, for the CNFs for NSM? Is that is that the idea? Well, and or, I mean, so if you had a terminal window piece like here, uh, you might actually uh, you know show, okay, this is how you go and you run it. You queue control, apply, or home install, blah, right? Um, okay, we well can do that. And then you get to see, a, you know, effectively a very simple walkthrough of the whole thing. Um, sort of set up as a really quick snapshot like that. So not long and, and meandering, um, but, but literally something where you could see exactly what you were doing um, and see results immediately. Something that makes it super simple. Okay. So installation, not um, like configuration. 
Yeah, so it would be things like installation, Helm install NSM, um, Helm install VPN, um, the cube control to redirect the, uh, or Helm install NSM monitoring, the cube control to redirect the skydive that shows up as a clickable link to whatever that local host port would be. And then you show the picture of what you would, something like what you would see in skydive, right? That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, was kind of what I was thinking. You've got probably the best visual sense on the call, so I, I would very much welcome your thoughts. I guess the um, we were Fred and I and some other people were talking about the different profiles. So there's the application developer profile, the operator profile, and the um, you know like maybe CNF developer profile. And uh, depending well, on what use case, one use case each is probably a really good way to represent it. Okay. Does that make sense? You know, so basically, yeah. you know, sort of a you know, you know, sort of leading with, you know, Sarah, you want to offer NSM to your to your Kubernetes cluster. Here's how you do it. That's sort of use mm -hmm. case one. Use case two might be you want to take advantage of the VPN gateway network service endpoint as a developer, you know, and you could show the YAML of what you add to your file, right? And then maybe the very last use case is you're, you know, you're a network service, you want to develop a network service, and we could show like, you know, the, the Lego blockness of the SDK um, for that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, I think that would be good. Yeah, because I, I like the notion of profiles. That's absolutely true. Uh, the right use cases for each one. I mean, it, it'll it'll show each class of user what they're what they're going to get out of it. Like, you know, like yep. you have someone who's Sarah. What what does Sarah get out of it? She, she gets something very simple that she can consume, or your, if you're an operator, you know, we can find we can work out uh, we can work that out as well and say okay this is what the operator gets out of it. And so and and there's definitely more more personas that we want to that we'll eventually want to uh, show off, but I, I think we should probably limit it to three on the on the website itself. Like what are the three uh, that we really want to express? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think the ones that um, we spoke about here are probably the highest, uh, the highest impact ones. Yep, I would agree. It seems like the those use cases for getting started can be done separately from it, this document saying release notes. Are you? Are we using this as a guide for all the things that want to be that that you want to be done um, with the release, or is this literally the release notes and all of these items have to be part of it? Uh, so what I was talking about here is. Yeah, so th th I think this is working out the release notes, what we have in front of us here. What I was suggesting was basically redoing the front page so that it grabs people. Um, does that make sense? Sure. Um, so maybe then we could say the getting started, what's part of the release notes here, um, you direct people to the front page. So just mm -hmm. going back, uh, we didn't have yeah, homepage redesign. So I see this here. Um, and specifically, you're talking about how to get started based on use. Oh, someone's already putting it in. Thanks. <clears throat> For the release notes itself, do we want to keep this item in here or pull it out? Like, is it necessary to have a getting started section as part of the release notes? Or can we pull this out and know that it's being handled somewhere else, um, possibly on the, the front 
page of the website. And I'm I'm okay with either with either direction. Um, if we do a if we do a getting started, uh, we can move to a, to a location that is more likely to be up to date over time. Uh, you know, and because we like if someone sees our zero one zero release notes and we're up to version one or two, then definitely want them to be using the newer version. But uh, at the same time. Uh, there is something really nice about being like you're in the document and it's like how do you install it this is how you install it and you know just having like one or two one or two quick liners uh as to like how how something works might uh might be interesting but we, it, it may be uh, we're, this might be a little uh, like because of its uh, flexibility uh like we it, it, it may be better to to stick this inside of a getting started uh, guide somewhere as well. You could always have a link from this to wherever it is, and ideally, the getting started is going to be, as you're saying, Fred. It'll be kept up to date, and it doesn't matter <clears throat> whatever release you're looking at. If someone is looking at a point one release, but you're on you know point or two point oh, then you're you would I would think you'd want to um, send people to whatever the current getting started is, and not have people getting started on something that was released a year ago. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and I think what we should do then is we should pick a, a URL that is long living. Uh, like network service mesh .io slash getting started or something like that that even if we decide to redesign the entire website that one url will always point to or redirect to the correct location that sounds good so they have this getting started, which actually goes outside of the main page, but it's um, it's not those use cases. I don't I know where is the, um, I guess you just happen to be, you have to scroll down and see this. But if you have, uh, well, it, it didn't show it's um, in the page, but if, if you look at the link, it's the, uh, an anchor on the same page here. So this data filtering use case, you could have something equivalent to that where it's um, slash getting started or slash with the, I'm gonna open it like this just so it goes, but something like that <clears throat> and a getting started section. So change this to be a link. Okay. Is that the <clears throat> idea here? There should be a link here. Um, Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good idea. Like we, if we add in a link there, then we can we can point to whatever that uh, page is that we want to that we that we want to do. Great. Are you okay with me resolving this one? The to do. Well, I guess it's it says. Um, I'm going to put it right here, actually. Rather than... Yeah, <clears throat> yeah uh, I think that should work. Okay. Uh, let's see. For... 
for the. Uh, what are the other images? items? For the Docker images, did we did we ever come to a conclusion as to how we were going to, of what format we were going to use? What format for the Docker images or? For the for the tags rather. Um. I think we got roughly a notion of what we were doing, but I don't think we came to a final, final resolution. Okay. Just punt that part until later then. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I think the highest value thing for me then from this thing, because a lot of this stuff is just busy work. Uh, it's pretty easy to, to get done once once it's out. Uh, but I just want to make sure like in the, in the what's new section uh, is, is this is this what we want to to say? Is like is this the is there anything that we're that we want to specifically call out that, that's missing here? Yeah, I think that's actually a really good start. Call out the network service mesh po uh, project itself. We call out the APIs, um, and we we can. I was thinking about putting a couple examples of. Uh, so you're still very faint, Frederick, but I, I think I kind of get where you're going, because effectively. Effectively, you've got the network service mesh architecture. There are some APIs that back it, and then we have this reference implementation that we've done for Kubernetes. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, that that's what I'm getting at. I, I want I want to show like because we're this is a huge release. Like they, like our first releases had like a, a year's worth of work. Yep. And so uh, I I don't think we can do justice to the project by uh, trying to call out importing commits or or similar. But I do think that we can show high level ideas. And we started with what is network service mesh? What are the APIs? What is the architecture for it? And then just drive down into more details of what we're of what we're releasing until we get down to the uh, to the concrete. Here are, here are the APIs you can look at. Here are the um, here's the reference Kubernetes architecture, which has real things that uh, that work today. Yep. Totally agree. Do you want to call this initial release versus what's new? Yeah, that, that's, that's probably a good idea. Yep. Yeah, I, and so is all of this wording still good for this section on the network service mesh API? I think it is on on that part. Um, yep. Well. We'll need to uh, we'll need to give a couple specifics on how things um, on how things look, but uh, yeah, in in a nutshell, that uh, that I think that's good. Okay. All right. So what are th this is I'm um, talking about a to do for specific APIs. So this would be. It sounds like interesting APIs for different personas or groups. Is, yeah, is that what I, you're thinking here? 
Yeah, like I'm thinking that we, we don't have to list every protocol buffer that we have, but I... I <laughs> Let's not. But but I think that if we list uh, some of the ones that we, that are, I guess, again, the highest impact ones, like I think the NSM to NSM uh, or the... Um, the remote the remote API, yeah. I think that and the service registry are the really two critical ones that come to mind. Yeah, because if you understand those two things, then you pretty much understand how to interact with uh, with NSM as a whole, and you can you can do useful things with knowing only those two APIs. Yep, agreed. So we'll add in. Um, Add in to the node onto that would be would be useful. So. What is the API again? Um, Called the remote API and registry API. You know, one thing it might be silly on my part, but. <clears throat> From the beginning, when we talked about gRPC and network service mesh, it seemed to me that the literal network communication was going to be over gRPC, and I guess that's that's not the case, right? It's through different various cross connections, regular network connections, EPP, all the normal stuff. It's just the API is yep. gRPC. So that was... To me, actually, was a confusing thing from the outside. So I thought it was somehow significant that that was the case or something. It's just essentially the API CRPC. Okay. Yep. No, that makes sense. Um, Do you want to put anything on this, like a small highlight what these are for? And is there any other ones that you want to put? Yeah, I, I think um, in the, in this scenario, we'll, we definitely need to fill out a little bit more. And I think the visualization is well combined with that will, will help. Are there existing visualizations for any of these APIs? Um, there is some in the in the deep dive that we can uh, that we can go and pull. Yep. I just realized Ed is a generator and I'm an indexer. <laughs> <laughs> In the Python sense? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> cool. So, um, yeah, so I think if we, um, yeah, I think both of those combined, I, I will give a short description about them. We'll link them to the registry API so they know where it is in the registry API. Uh, show them the visualization, and I think those combined will, will be more than enough for this section. Um, people may ask about, well, what about, uh, what about the pod or, or so on, and, um, and we can point them towards that when, when, they, when they want, or in other documentation where, um, where it's more appropriate, but I think for the release notes, those two are, are good. Um, 
Is there an API a document, a living API document right now or something where someone could go and look at all of the NSM APIs? They are in the GitHub repo. So maybe add a link to this. You, you would probably want to add a link with a guide because they're in several files for reasons that are really useful, but really unhelpful if you're trying to write an API guide. Yeah, I, so I actually there, think, um, go ahead. I, I, I think in the, uh, this is some, not something to really drive at this point, but um, I, it may, it may actually in the long run be useful to even move the APIs out into their own repo so that you don't have to consume the entire Kubernetes infrastructure to, to, consume, the, to, to consume the APIs. Um, yeah, very likely a good idea. But uh, for the moment, this, this is a good spot for it. And I think we'll be, um, we, we could give a link to where they're at, but I, I also agree with Ed. I think I, that's why I wanted to focus on those two is because like, you can you can pretty much build an ENSM and get a good understanding as to how it works uh, with with just those two, um, and we could probably point people to like a, the deep dive or or something similar when they want to know more about the other APIs, and we say we'll go find the um, go find the relevant uh, section in the deep dive. Yep. I think people are going to want to be able to go and read well i'll say that i i'm that type of person i'd want to go look through the different apis that are available if i'm writing something um versus a video i want docs or and or code where all of the apis live uh, sorry i i was thinking of the the slideshow as opposed to the video uh because it, it'll have it has uh, visualizations with the protocol buffers But uh, if it makes sense to do it in a document form, I mean, we, we, could, uh, we could probably do something along that as well. All right. So what about this next section? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll spend some time writing, um, writing a description out on that, uh, a first pass on that, and then we can, uh, beat up my my wording afterwards um, basically what I the idea that I want on it is just to say that the ar reference architecture uh, that we described is um, is a is high level um, like like what we're describing is is high level and and what we're and we're saying that this is actually a subset of uh, NSM's capabilities so uh, like basically like we, you know, this doesn't account for ENSMs or uh, how do you do like a proxy and M a proxy NSM patterns. And, and so I think that, um, you know, so with, with a br brief preface of, of what the arch of what the reference architecture is, and then we can go straight into the, into the actual, um, reference architecture and the one last thing as well is I we need to work out where do we want to put the glossary because it actually feels unnatural as to where, where it currently is with the to do I immediately below the um, uh, the description um, so I we, that's probably the last thing that we want to that, that we definitely want to call out as well is like here's a here's a list of all of our terms but but at the same time I, I think the reason why it ended up with the to do there is because um, in order to really understand this next section, you, it, it may help to have the glossary available. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so I'll, I'll see about wording it in such a way that we can, that we can get to that, uh, get to that glossary. Uh, the only thing that bothers me in the glossary, though, is uh, that the glossary may change over time, and then words here may become nonsensical to a future reader. So that, that's that's my only concern with it. Agreed. 
If this is for the release notes, then the glossary, if it's a snapshot in here, then it's relevant to everything you're talking about. So up here at the top, you're, when you're saying initial release and going through things, um, there could be items that you're talking about here, which may change in a future release, but right now the glossary would be relevant. So yeah, I, mean, I would say anything that you talk about directly in the release notes <clears throat> where you could add a glossary items for those and then give a link to the current glossary for, you know, additional information, which will relate to whatever the current release is. Yeah, my, the only thing that I worry about is this, is, uh, this document getting, uh, it's already a long document, so I'm, I'm concerned about the length of it as well. But uh, we could have it as, like a, as an appendix or something, saying like here are relevant terms or something similar to that. Sure, or just uh, put a link and delete everything else. Yeah, or yeah, a link a link to, uh, I could also just do it, I could create a PDF of like version 010 and say here's the glossary as of this date for, re for release version 010. And then, and then I could just link to that and then not have to worry about it ever again. Yeah, so I think those are the main things. Like, I, I don't think I have anything else uh, to really go through um, other than um, eventually we're gonna circle back and we'll go over the, the known issues that we want to call out. Uh, but beyond that, like I think, um, I think I'm pretty happy with with where it's at at the moment. Yeah, I think it's actually we, we have a small thing, a, a small set of this that we still have to sort out. But yeah, we've actually done a pretty good job overall. I think. Yeah, and and the known issues uh, that that could even just be a that 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 could also be a link to a li to a living document that says like as we as we put it out there, I expect the list of known issues to grow. So yeah. so we could put that in a link and say for version zero one zero here are the known issues with it, and then uh, that actually ties us into the next version, which is here are the things that are fixed. Yep. So that reminds me, I need to reach out um, to see by getting the um, the website the website front uh, front page design uh, kicked off again. Uh, unless you've already done that, Ed. No, no, I think you probably want to reach out to Luke for that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll reach out today. I'll, I'll send him a message on that. And um, yeah, I'll tell him I like, I, or tell him that we like um, what we saw in uh, open policy. Like, I actually think that's, uh, that's really powerful. And I actually want to use open policy now because I saw that. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... They've done a really nice job with that front page. It's really quite stunningly well done. Okay. Ed, Ed do you want to go over the technology tree to roadmap? Do we have uh, time in the next I mean, I can, minutes? I can hum or... a few bars if you want to bring up the technology tree. Um, I don't think we're going to make a lot of substantive progress, but we could at least introduce it. Okay. Um, there, there's an incredible amount of value in just warming people to ideas. Um, so th this is an attempt to look at some of the stuff that we're looking at going forward. Um, and, and basically what I've done is I've sort of taken some of the functional boxes, like we've got a bunch of stuff we know we have to do about security. Getting interdomain finished probably you know, really depends on that. Um, we've got a bunch of things that 
we want to do around being able to get DNS support, right? That probably depends on, you know, various things around maybe transi possibly transitioning init containers to NSC monitor containers, the sort of control plane sidecars. Um, you know, as you sort of go through this and you say, well, I want hardware NICs. Well, properly doing hardware NICs is something for which you're going to want to enter domain. Um, that, that kind of stuff. And so building out the tree of interdependencies and then just trying to capture the things. Um, and I use some of the, the blue and the green background just to make it easier to pick out where there are clusters of things that are related to each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. This. Yep. I'm still not sure why interdomain. I mean, I know I have read the the, the spec, but I'm I'm still not sure why a hardware NIC and a service support is bound to interdomain. Well, so basically, what it comes down to is, um, let me let me sort of put it this way: if all you want to do is drop an SRIO VAF into your pod, you can do that right now with device plugin. But of course, the interesting question is, what does that SRIO VNIC connect to? Right? That's the really interesting question is, what is that SRIO VNIC connected to? Um, and the, the truth of the matter is, um, network service mesh, where it really has value to add in this space, is in allowing you to say, I want this network service to be on this SRIO VVF. And the cleanest way to do that is with interdomain because then the people who are controlling the Tor ports, who actually are mechanically in charge of what shows up on that VF as a service, they can have their own manageable domain. And I, I mean, I, I, I know the data center people I've dealt with, like approximately zero data center humans are ever going to turn over control of their Tor switches to some separate administrative domain that's being run by their freaking Kubernetes people. It's just never gonna happen, right? They'll, they'll run away from that because it feels dangerous. But if you give them the domain for those that DC network stuff and you expose it as network services that can then show up in those pods as SRO VVFs or physical NICs, that's something you can get NetOps guys comfortable with. That makes sense? Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, isn't it like the same domain? Like, I mean, if it's a, the, the Tor switch, I would kind of feel like it's uh, something that, that can be within my domain or also within the domain of the Kubernetes admin. Uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, you apparently you know much mightier Kubernetes admins than I do. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, okay. It, it, there's you know I mean and, and the truth of the matter is like you don't have to do it that way. It's just any realistic deployment I think is going to look like that. Um, does that make sense? Um, yes. And I mean, uh, because uh, what we're doing with uh, Taylor and uh, essentially the guys from the CN CNCF, CNF test bed, is that in order to be able to insert the traffic generator traffic uh, to inject it in the NSM so that it, you can pass it through the routing chain you have to figure out a way to essentially connect to the outside world and we call this kind of i don't know gateway or something and uh, even we have a spec about the gateway and i was just wondering how this uh, mix with uh, this hardware and the accessory of etc because we have to figure out a way to uh, inject traffic outside yep of nsa i, I, I... I think what I'm hearing here is that the there's probably a need to revisit those specs and pull them together more coherently. Yeah. Um, I recently did an update to the inner domain um, that I would highly recommend folks look at. It, it takes the same initial idea and it makes it a little bit more flexible. And it, it, it occurred to me when I was doing it that it actually makes um, it actually starts looking more gateway like in some sense. Huh. And, Oh, there should probably be some revisit of the discussion about the gateway um, spec as well. Okay, but I mean uh, the 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 
the bigger idea here is, uh, are we saying that, because essentially the gateway is kind of the translation point between the physical outside world and the inside NSM world, if you want to call it like this. And then here, what you're saying in this inter-domain uh, arrow to the hardware NIC SRUV essentially means that hardware NIC and SRUV are represented as services that the NSM guys are supposed to consume, like the NSM pods uh, or clients are supposed to yeah, consume. Actually, so it's, actually, it's a bit... Uh, mm. Yeah, what I'm actually suggesting is that SRUV VFs and hardware NICs are actually mecha local mechanisms by which um, these things can, they're, they're local mechanisms by which um, you can connect your pod to a network service. It happens to be local mechanisms where, you know, they're coming via the SRIO VVF and where the thing that's actually providing the service is a Tor port. Um, but they are basically local mechanisms. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We definitely need it, to revisit. Yep. Ed, it, it might be good on a taking it off this call for to get with you and have you um, review the latest updates for the use case that we're trying to implement. Nope, and then see if if what you're doing for these uh, diagrams on how it fits together in this tree. Well, I, I think already actually, are covered or, or not. I, I think what's actually going to be most productive with this, quite frankly, um, is effectively the following, which is um, the stuff that you are currently doing. I think from what I've been seeing, like Nikolai has super well in hand. There is stuff that you are clearly going to want to be doing at some point. You know, you're eventually going to want to let NSM manage your SRIO VVFs, right? Um, and when you get to that place, um, then you're going to want to, um, you, when, when you get to that place, you're going to want to um, start, you know, considering the stuff that's going on in those specs. And so I would say that looking at them earlier is better. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think we may be there with the, the use case at this point. We're essentially putting, we're trying to have a CNF or that has the mechanisms to talk to the physical interface and it, whatever that would be, you could think that could be SRV or, or whatever type of access, but we're trying to implement in my mind. And I think that may be what Nikolai is saying that portion of, in the, in the upper right, I think we're actually trying to get this working as part of the latest one. I, I think you may not have seen it. Yep. We may be at a point where we actually need what you're talking about. Okay. I mean, we, we, we can definitely catch up and, and, and make sure. Okay. Oh, I was. Trying to go out of full screen and and shared. All right, so I, I think that's it. Do it. Um, there are some action items in the release notes. Um, do you have a link for the the updated um, reference documentation, Ed, that you can drop in here? Uh, to review. The re reference documentation for... Yeah, you're saying there's the specs that may be more oh, relevant. All the, all the links from the, the te technology tree are actually up to date. So like the interdomain and the hardware neck links in the technology tree, they're all up to date. So, you know, you can... Oh, up. okay, great. Would this be the one that you're saying to review? Yep. Exactly. I, th 
I think that's what you're suggesting about yeah. how to use the local mechanisms connection. Great. Yep, yep. All right. Well, we're coming up on the hour. Is there anything else? No, this has been good. Thank you. Yeah. So one last thing, we probably need to add skill points to the skill tree. <laughs> no, I, I think this is all excellent and um, I think Dan's going to be a bit uh, at first like he's expecting a roadmap but then when I think when we give him the skill tree I think I think he'll be pleasantly surprised yep I would agree thanks everyone see you next time Thank you guys. See you. Thank Bye. you very much. See you.